the beginning of the Color HQ broadcast with uh, x ray and Jim Mamihi. Uh, go ahead, Jim. Hello, everyone. My name is Jim Mamihi, Color Management Specialist with ColorHQ.com. Welcome to our latest Google Hangout entitled The Next Step in I1 Color Management. As many of you know, x ray is a leader in the field of color management. What you may not know is that x ray recently launched a number of new products and software improvements to help improve productivity. Today we'll be talking about the latest offerings from x ray and how they can help you in your everyday workflow. In addition, we will be announcing a special offer at the end of the Hangout for current I1 users that you won't want to miss. Bob Miller, the Director of Sales and Marketing for ColorHQ.com will be moderating this event. During the Hangout, attendees will be muted. However, if you'd like to ask questions, please enter them in the chat field and we will have them answered towards the end of the presentation. For those of you who may be joining us late, click the live button at the bottom of your window to watch the live presentation. At this time, I would like to introduce Ray Scheidler, Printing and Imaging Product Portfolio Manager with x -Ray. Ray serves as the Chairman of the Process Control Committee, the Committee for Graphic Arts Technology Standards, or CGATS, and Metrology. Ray also serves as Vice Chair for the ICC, or International Color Consortium. Thank you, Ray, for taking the time to talk with us today. I'm sure you'd like to get started, so I'll have Bob turn it over to you. Thanks, Jim. Uh, so I think first I'll uh, do a couple of quick slides just to sort of set the framework here and then after that I will um, actually do some live work inside of the new product so you can see that. So let me uh, share my screen here. There we go. So uh, just in case you want to know who to yell at, that's uh, my name at the top and uh, Jim and Bob here. Uh, today what we're really going to talk about here are, um, are, is the i1 family of products and I'm having a little mouse control problem right now so let's see if I can solve that. There we go. So uh, one of the things to think about I think is that the i1 family you know, some folks are uh, aware of the i1 uh, instrument, the i1 Pro 2. Some are aware of our display products, the i1 Display Pro, but it really is a family of products. So we have uh, not only the new uh, i1 Pro 2, but we also have a you know, new version of its uh, automated accessory, the I.O. table. And uh, we just introduced a new version of the i1 Isis, so the i1 Isis 2. And, uh, and then to complement all of that, we've uh, updated the i1 profiler software. So I think one of the things to think about when you think of the i1 uh, product line is it really is a family and it's meant to uh, provide you know, functionality exactly how you need it and meet your needs wherever you are. So uh, one of the things also I think that's really key is to understand that you know, it's not just an instrument you get when you purchase just the i1 Pro, right? You're even at that point you're buying a, a kit. You're buying a kit that has all the tools you need to, to get started and it's based on you know how you how you uh, purchase that kit depending on what level of need you need whether you're a photographer or whether you're in pre-press that sort of thing but if you just look on this slide one of the things that I think is uh, unique uh, is lots of folks have an older device and uh, they're used to the uh, older accessories where you had a two-handed spot shoe or you had uh, a uh, unprotected calibration plate or you know things like that and so the new device also comes with a whole new suite of accessories and each one has really been designed to uh, hit the pain points that we found from the earlier devices. So one of the things to think about when that we look at the i1 Pro 2 itself first of all is it really is the fastest and most robust i1 yet and and one of the reasons why is if we look in this upper corner here, upper right hand corner, you see the i1 moving along there, but what you see it really doing is you see it moving on that new guide. And that new guide has, um, you know, markings there that the i1 is reading so it knows exactly where it is the entire time you're reading a chart. And that gives you great ability to uh, read patches in different configurations. and you no longer have to have that perfect automated glide that many of you folks may have uh, developed over time because now it's very speed insensitive. You can go fast or you can go slow 
and because it knows where it is, it's really only a question if you go too fast, and it will warn you of that uh, if you have a problem reading. But it really allows for uh, issues you know, that were very difficult to deal with on the old ruler are now solved with the new ruler. Uh, also, in addition, is, uh, are a couple of things that are under the hood, which aren't necessarily obvious just by seeing the new shell. And uh, so one of that is this wavelength calibration. So one of the things that is unique here is we use a uh, unique new technology inside of there. So when we're calibrating, we're also checking that the instrument itself hasn't been knocked around or misbehaved, you know, behaving in some way that is difficult to tell when you're just reading a, a white tile. So we have a narrow band uh, emitter inside of there that actually verifies and allows us to do a little bit of correction as well if the instrument has been knocked around. Uh, it also adds a piece that is near and dear to my heart. It meets the new illumination standards, so primarily the big ad here is it now uh, measures in M1, but it also means that now a single device can measure in M0, M1, or M2. So those M's are uh, something you can find out more about on our website, but basically what it says is if you're in a graphic arts workflow, uh, M1 is very important because the new specifications are all requiring M1 and uh, the older M0 or UV cut devices have been deprecated. If you're in the photo world, um, the advantage here really is this ability to deal with uh, OBC and things like that inside of our software using this technology. Uh, and then, of course, I just talked about the improved accessories. And the other piece, which is nice, again, primarily if you're in a graphic arts workflow, is the instrument itself is native XRGA. And XRGA is the X-ray graphic arts standard which means that if you're moving data from uh, one part of your operation to another part and perhaps interchanging with uh, you know, some other software, XRGA gives you the best inner model agreement uh, possible. So in the I1 Profiler software itself, obviously we've now included uh, some additional pieces. So we have the ISIS-2, which adds in that M1 measurement mode, and we support that new device. Uh, we've also put in uh, scanning dual scan support so that we can get scanning operation for M1 and M2 using the I.O. table. So this is a long-awaited feature that uh, speeds up the ability of the I.O. 2 uh, when using either M1 or M2 measurement modes. We've added a new patch set editor. This is a real advanced feature in here, but for users who uh, need to modify patch sets because they have a particular uh, printing set where they want to test or better sample, you know, some area of color space, they can actually go in and use one of our standard sets and then uh, use the patch set editor to modify that. Or they can even create, you know, out of scratch custom patch sets for any sort of purpose that they want to get measurement data from. Or if it has the right sampling and color space, you know, profiling. So it picks this kind of thing up from, you know, lots of other places and it also allows us to modify patch sets that are, come from other applications as well. The feature I'm most in love with here is this measured patch viewer. This uh, requires the new i1 Pro 2 or an i1 Profiler dongle, but it uh, really gives you a way to visualize these new measurement effects and give you a quick spot of data so that if you want to uh, look at something and you know that you have a target in here, before you go build a profile, you can go double-click the patch and get feedback on what it's doing. Uh, there are also a couple other parts of the system that have been updated, so we've updated some features in display profiling. Uh, again, allowing essentially advanced features where you can specify a target white point, or you can go in here and specify you know, a particular black target as well. And in the scanner profiling, we've added the ability to actually provide custom reference data, and so lots of folks like to use their i1 Pro 2 to actually measure their color checker to make sure that it's still good, but also to then provide a custom reference data that they can use um, for scanner profiling as well. So at this point, I think I'm going to uh, drop out of this prepared presentation and go into the software itself and show a few fun tools there that we've just sort of talked about. So this is the i1 profiler uh, basic interface at the top end, and I suppose I should say really this is the basic interface, so this is the uh, simplest version, but we're going to be walking through the advanced version as uh, well. So a couple of key things to understand here. Licensing is uh, part of the story here. So uh, your i1 Pro 2 
may be just licensed for monitor profiling, or it may be like the one I have attached, uh, which licenses all of the pieces here. Um, so it's really just, again, a question of uh, suiting the tool for what you want to do. And if you have an older device that's licensed for the software, the transfer license allows you to transfer the license from your old device to your new device, and, and that sort of thing. It also gives you some ability to go, you know, know what version of software you're in, and an often overlooked piece is this last part down here, uh, particularly the training video. If you go into the training video section, it takes you online and it really can walk you through videos using each one of the tools inside of here. And I think that's a key uh, piece that often people miss, and yet it's really valuable. So I'm going to go slip over here onto the uh, left side over here. And so we're really not going to talk about the display side today. There's a lot of uh, features inside of here. but but it covers really the three things you need. It gives you a lot of flexibility in profiling the display. It allows you to trend the display over time, and it allows you to uh, check that it's really uniform, so that sometimes you'll see displays where uh, the backlight starts to get uh, inconsistent, and uniformity tracking is one of the ways to test that. Uh, we also do prof uh, projector profiling and do the same quality tracking for that as well. But where we're really going to talk about today is both this printer section and some of the tools down here um, as well. So I'm going to drop right into uh, using CMYK and using the profiling section just to talk about a couple of those tools that we just were talking about. So clicking in here brings me up the software. I've got uh, a really big patch in there right now. I'm going to move to a simpler system in a second. But you know, looking at the overall interface here, is probably a key piece to know. So you, you're normally brought up with all of your assets, whether they're patch sets, test charts, measurement data, all of that, as well as profiles that you've built in the system as well, which are down stored down at the bottom. Of course, I have a lot of data in here. Um, and then in the center is the area where you're generally doing most of your work. And each step is al along the way allows you to go uh, do this process. And then below is your workflow. So as you get more advanced, there's two ways to walk through this program. You can do it step by step using the next button on the right, or if you know what you're doing, you can jump into any stage of the workflow, particularly if you're dragging assets in that allow you to predefine some of these things. So you know, in this case, we'll do a simple uh, process in here. I'll pick uh, a standard chart. So you'll see that I now have two different keys lit, lit up here, and this is because I'm carrying a test chart that actually has uh, formatting in it, so I can just drop it right in there, and it will you know, populate that, and it will, if I click on that tab, it will move me forward into that section of the workflow, and it allows me to go do you know anything I want to do, and I could change instruments and reformat it for a different instrument if I wanted to. Um, so you know, any of these things give you lots of flexibility in uh, reusing your assets, as well as walking through the program. The part I really want to talk about right now, though, is not the interface of the program, but some of these new features. So I'm going to take some pre-measured data that I have here. Uh, let's see. Actually, let's take uh, let's take this here. And so in this case. Let's see, did I drop the weight line I wanted or not? Let's drop this one instead. OK, so if I now double click any of these patches, one of the features I get is I get this new uh, sidebar over here. And so the sidebar really tells me a lot about what's going on. We'll see that I've measured it in such a way that I have um, captured multiple kinds of data. And so I can see that both in a soft proof here, but I also now can see this in a spectral curve. So we can see that this has a lot of brighteners in this paper. And brighteners are one of those things that um, allow something to look nice white, nice and white, but uh, really affects the way uh, print looks in different areas. So this is one of the features of the i1 Pro 2 is it really lets you uh, tune this data then um, to go accomplish, you know, either measuring for a particular graphic arts workflow, which is a D50 workflow, and is a D50 viewing booth. And that's where M1 comes in handy. We're using this captured kind of data where we have uh, 
both M1 or M0 and M2 where we can go and actually tune this for a particular light source as well. But in the sidebar here, so we get this graphing here, we'll see that we can see target numbers so that in particular, uh, if you're trying to aim in a graphic arts workflow for a particular white point, this gives you a quick idea of what, whether your white point is matching a standard here or not. Um, as well as allowing you to do things like look at density and you can choose different kinds of statuses as well. But the tool now gives you sort of that ability to go preview data that be before you actually save out the data set to get the answer that you're looking for. And of course, you can always just using the bar down here at the bottom, you can switch back out to your assets and you know move on with the rest of your workflow. So that's that's a nice piece. I think the other part that I forgot to mention in here, and let's move this into uh, profiler settings. So this isn't a new feature, but I think it's one of those, again, a piece that uh, often folks forget is there, is the fact that there's uh, built into the system, there's, you know, profiling setting help. So I, as I go over each setting inside of here, if I have turned help on, it will tell me what each of these settings does. So this is a great way uh, to get familiar with the program in a very, you know, piece by piece. So as you ha have a question about, you know, what does this do or what are the features inside of here, you can turn help on and go uh, piece by piece uh, back into the system and go do that. So another uh, part that we talked about in here was, uh, I'm going to go back home here for a second, and um, that we talked about a couple of other pieces. One thing that uh, number of people don't know is in a version or so ago we added device link profiling so that's a piece to know and one reason that uh, some folks don't know that is this also requires the use of an i1 pro 2 or the, um, the use of a uh, i1 published on so uh, if you need that function it is in the software today and it's a nice uh, tool to add in there the other part I will do a quick look at here is the patch set editor. So this is really a neat feature in that I can go uh, take one of these, and so let's take a nice uh, simple patch set and drag that in here. And so I can take any of these, or it also you see we have the ability to go load here as well, so I can load in a CGS file or a color port file to go do that. But, but now I have all of these patches in here, and these are you know, the reference data for this piece in here. So this is, or not the reference data, but the recipe data. So uh, we can see, you know, that that's what this is. And so at this point, this allows us to go in here, and we could modify one of these if we wanted to, or we could delete a patch set, or we could add additional patches. And so again, this is a, an advanced feature, but this is one of those features that we had in a couple of utilities, and we're trying to make it so that you don't have to jump around from program to program do some of these advanced features. So from there, you know, the, the other piece to recognize is we've added uh, in these additional uh, support for the instruments from the scanning side, the dual scan on the I.O., and uh, the ability to go uh, do this, uh, support the I1 ISIS 2 with its M1 version and also its, of course, M0 and M2 support. And linking all these things together is really what gives the power of the I1 family together uh, to go do that. So I think at that point, I may have skipped something over here, Jim, but uh, I think uh, the next piece I want to talk about is um, an instrument piece, and I'm not sure if we want to talk about uh, anything that came in between that. Otherwise, I've talked several times about the ISIS-2, and I think it's worthy of a picture. Um, one of the pieces to recognize that is a big piece in here is this M1 measurement mode. So we've talked about this, or I've talked about this several times now, but the, using the M0, the M1, and the M2, uh, all of these fit into particular workflows. So the traditional graphic arts workflow is M0, so we've got that mode covered. Um, a lot of the photo workflow has been M2 in the past, and is now moving into sort of that OBC workflow that we have. And um, now, of course, covered in the, in the ISIS, you have all of those modes covered in any way that you want to. And again, we've moved this instrument to XRGA native as well, so again, that gives you that great intermodal agreement, not only in the I1 family, so between the I1 and the uh, I1 ISIS, but also into any of the other extra graphic arts tools, so that if you need to move data back and forth, 
that gives you that as well. And of course, there's two versions. There's a letter size and a tabloid size version here. So depending on your workflow, if you're uh, doing digital print and doing primarily small format or desktop, then the letter size is the right one. And if you're doing uh, proofing or uh, larger versions of digital print, then of course, using UV uh, A3 is the plus. And of course, we've also updated its look and a lot of updates under the hood to make it a little more robust and easier to service as well. So I think that brings me to questions, and I think Jim's probably got a few that have come in. Sure. Um, <clears throat> go ahead into the question field here. We've got one question um, from an attendee. He's asking if there is ever going to be an upgrade to Profile Maker 5.3 packaging with the multicolor plugin, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the, it's a twofold question, really. Profile Maker packaging itself will not get, get updated. We are looking at that functionality, though, because, of course, what we've really done is take in I1 profilers. We took core technology from uh, both uh, Profile Maker and core technology from uh, the Monaco profiler software and essentially took out the best of both worlds. And uh, we're looking at uh, what those next updates should be in this package from uh, from the big feature set as well as, as doing these small uh, additions as well. So uh, we're, we're looking at the, as packaging becomes a stronger and stronger part of our business, we're looking at those options right now. And certainly we have the ability to bring that directly into Island Profile. Fantastic. That sounds great. We have another question um, from an attendee. He says, can I use my old I1 match charts as they are, I guess, with I1 Profiler? Probably, he's probably what he's asking is if he can use the same types of ITA charts that he had with I1 Match with the old system, which I believe all those charts are already included into I1 Profiler, correct, Ray? Uh, well, I mean, all the standard ITA charts are definitely in I1 Profiler. I right. think um, the Match had a few additional charts in there that were smaller chart sets, and mm -hmm. the truthful, I don't remember if Match allowed you to export those out as a... Uh, as a CGATS file or not. If they did, then we can certainly use those. If there was no uh, export of that, the only way you could measure them is if I quickly drop back over here. There's a feature in here that uh, allows you to measure charts. And so the measure chart feature essentially allows you to measure almost any random kind of chart. So you can go say, I've got a chart that has, you know, measuring with my I1 Pro 2, and I measure my pack sizes, and I go, oh, look, I've got you know, I've got seven rows or nine rows, and I've got you know, X amount of columns per page, and then I can go read any chart. So I, I can even do a chart that I don't know the basis of. All I need is a measurement value. But if, it, if it's available instead as a CGATS file, then the CGATS file um, would allow you to go and do that as well. So um, it's just a choice. Sure. And in, can you tell us what file extensions can be used to import charts into I1 Profiler? Is it just CGATS files, or are there anything else? Yeah. So we, we I mean, they're, they're all pretty much have a, a uh, other than the, the custom extensions that I1 Profiler uses uh, to identify what are really CXF or XML files, um, most of the other ones, unfortunately, have an a extension of .txt, right, which is you know, to the legacy format for many of these. But so you can import, for the most part, you can import charts from Colorport, Profile Maker, or any uh, of many different versions of, um, of the CGATS or the ISO equivalent files. The challenge only is that the, the, any of these text files, when we were doing utility to uh, import uh, ITA charts in CGATS format, uh, we stopped after we got 17 different versions of those. So there's a point of uh, diminishing in terms of <laughs> packages except all of the standardized CDs, uh, output. Okay. Well, I've got a couple more questions. Um, this one's related to the, uh, the patch viewer. And uh, what I'm asking here is, does the i1 Pro have the ability to measure a single patch to be used with the new patch viewer? What I mean by that is, is that in the past, you pretty much had to make your own test chart for one patch in order to just take a single spot reading. Do we have that ability now with the i1 software? So, so the answer is uh, yes and no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, as I showed in, the, in, in that process, as soon as you take any measurement, um, 
you can use that patch viewer if you have the Nine One Pro too. Mm -hmm. So you do need some sort of chart to measure in because the the process is chart centric. That's sort of the the reason for I One Profiler to be there. But um, we can do either a single patch in that in the measure chart view, just create a single one, or in any of the profiling views. If you're doing spot measurement, you could bring up any target at all and measure into it and just double click that measurement spot and get that. Preview. Oh, great. You know, you don't really have to do any extra work if all you're trying to do is get a quick read of something. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Um, the next question, can you tell, tell us what RIP solutions are already supporting the I1 ISIS 2? I1 ISIS 2, um, well, the nice thing is with a, with a simple switch of um, the uh, DLL or framework, uh, anyone that supported the ISIS itself should be compatible. I see. You just have to switch out uh, a little file on each of those for it to recognize the ISIS 2 and not try and um, double convert it to XRGA since the instrument is, num you know, is now default XRGA. But there are a number, I mean, we already have uh, about 15 major RIP vendors who have um, done preliminary work before we released it, but as far as when their releases hit, that I don't have the information at the top of my hand. I mean, so that's, but all of your normal, you know, high-end RIP vendors have uh, already done the work. It's just a question of what their release schedule is. Fantastic. Uh, next question. Can the old I1 ISIS be converted for M1 measurements and the other new features? Yeah, unfortunately, the answer is no. That's something we really were uh, hoping that could be done, but uh, the reality was once we uh, did the internal construction changes, and the work to uh, do the special calibration that M1 really requires, um, to do that would be essentially taking the car down to the frame and rebuilding it back up. And at that price, you know, it would be like restoring a classic car. It would be more expensive than the car was. <laughs> right. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, and the full warranty and everything. <laughs> Okay, and the next question actually is the last question. How often is it recommended to get the I1 ISIS 2 recertified in general for ISO compliance? Sure, so um, ISO compliance doesn't require um, a, an explicit time frame. What they require is that you do one of two things. Uh, either you follow the manufacturer's recommendation, and our recommendation on all instruments is to do this annually. Um, this covers sort of that great and that all the possible use cases. And so we know that annually is a, is a good time frame, both from a performance perspective and also one that's easy for people to remember. Um, but if you don't do it annually, then you have to be able to prove uh, in your workflow and document that your instruments are still in compliance with where they were. So this becomes a practical problem that is very difficult to do. And so annual recertification just solves that problem. And if you're in a, in a place where that actually requires that, that's just a normal part of your workflow in any case. Makes sense. So it looks like that's it for the questions for today. We're going to turn it over to Bob Miller. He's going to talk about the new I1 promotion and uh, conclude our Google Hangout. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Ray. Um, just wanted to let everybody know that um, we've been working with x right and are excited to pre-announce that um, starting May 15th, for a limited time, time only, you'll be able to trade in your old i1 Pro device and get an i1 Basic Pro 2 for only $995. Now all the details are still to be worked out and will be appearing on nextright.com and colorhq.com as we get closer to May 15th. But this offer will be valid from May 15th until June 30th, 2015. Now, this concludes our Color HQ Live Hangout. Um, please visit colorhq.com or call us at 888-265-6717 should you have any questions. I'd like to thank you all for joining us.